How's it going, guys? Uno Gaming back again. Um, something a little bit different. We've got a free for all today. Um, two ogres, one cafe, and one corn. Uh, myself playing ogres. I'm going against the cafe player. Um, a very typical cafe build, which I did expect to run into. But in all fairness, even though I knew this was coming, I did not bring enough anti large to deal the terracotta sentinels. It was the safe assumption that I knew the Terracotta Sentinels were going to be quite a big thing. Plus, uh, obviously, Mao Ying. It Really, I should have gone and maybe got some money, a great weapon, something like that. I could have even got some crushers with great weapons. Or even looked at changing the Mournfang Cavalry into Mournfang Cavalry with great weapons. But straight away, off the bat, um, he's got his, cavalry, his cannon quite far up. And it's just ripping shots off straight away. So in my head, I know I might as well rush. I've got two squads of lad belchers. We've got three squads of normal ogre bulls. Two squads of man eaters with ogre pistols. Absolutely love these guys. I said on the last video, huge fan of them. We've got two squads of ogre bulls with jewel weapons. A sneaky squad of noblars on the side. A tyrant, which I forget to move for the most part of this fight. And two squads of mournfang cavalry. They were just sort of sweeper units just to protect my um, lead belchers. But realistically, I probably maybe could have gone some saber to and got a bit more heavy on the infantry or even picked up a few more lead belchers. Uh, we do have corn fighting the ogres over here. Um, you know, similar sort of matchup. So, straight off the bat. He now realises he needs to get his cannon back because it's taken a fair amount of shots from the lead belchers, who, in my opinion, just absolute phenomenal units. Absolutely love them. I would not make an ogre army without them. You get to see them here just absolutely ripping shots out. And absolutely peppering them. So, the person I'm playing against straight away dispatches numerous squads of peasant horsemen to try and deal with this but I did expect it um, the man is obviously being hybrid units I'll just put them into melee and get them to go run in a fight uh, I know they'll win that quite easily get the overboards with dual weapons in there and then these noblars just trap the peasant horsemen to slow them but a group of them do get through but the Mournfang cavalry clean up the peasant horsemen this side and that's an interesting ability to be cast in Talons of the Night. Uh, obviously, there's good damage, but for one squad of Ogre Balls, probably not worthwhile. You probably should have cast it up here. I've got a bit more value out of it. But my opponent is doing well. He got the cannon back, and it's now shooting again. So, oh, hitting him with a cannon there. We use the Nobl We use it. Nobl the Mournfang Cavalry to keep these peasant horsemen down and we're using the noblars to keep these peasant horsemen off the back and move all the infantry up and this is where we really start to struggle because the terracotta sentinels i've got to try and dodge them i do dismember this one just so i could slip these mournfang in and i really wanted to shut down this grand cannon it's causing me quite a few issues but this does end up costing causing me more than it does actually me gaining but even so, we managed to get the cannon down and they run off. The ogre balls run in. Ogre balls with dual weapons being beaten this side. And we get the man eaters with their ogre pistols to start popping shots. Meanwhile, I know I've got an issue. These terracotta sentinels are going to cause me quite a few issues. I start peppering Mao Ying. That's a better talent of the night. Catches a couple of units of infantry there. Start absolutely peppering these units. Um, um, I'm pretty sure we run some Mournfang cavalry in again. We've got the man eaters. A squad of man eaters with great weapons would have done wonders here. And I do regret not bringing a squad. Just to help take apart the terracotta sentinels. So lead belchers are still firing shots off. 
Mao Ying's working through and my idiotic mistake is I still have a tyrant sat over here who could be helping with the Terracot Sentinels. Noblars are still watching just to make sure those Peasant Horsemen don't come back even though they're quite easy to dodge at this point. I should have brought them back and Noblars helped take down the Terracotta. These Ogre Bulls, again, a bit of Miss Marco by myself. But I do manage to get a second Morphan Cavalry Charge around them and into the cannons just to get rid of those. So they're now off the board. And this one squad of Morphan Cavalry is keeping a Terracotta Sentinel, the cannons, some Jade Warriors all busy. This Terracotta Sentinel is going down slowly but surely. And it does send Mao Ying in to try and stop my lead belchers from doing so much damage. This time I pull the more Van Cavalry out way before they take too much shots, whereas ironically I let this one get absolutely pelted. But look at that charge, and I do go for a little bit of charge on the side while he seems to not be paying too much attention to this terracotta. He does send the second terracotta back for some reason, uh, and I still haven't noticed that my Tyron is sat there. Funnily enough, the thing that does make me notice that my tyrant sat there is he sends Mao Ying to go fight him. Uh, I luckily manage to regroup everything and we start moving on back into the fray. One Terracotta Sentinel's nearly been put down. And the other one's still really quite healthy, but you know, we chop nearly chopped down through 12k of one of them. So he sends Mao Ying after the tyrant. Uh, me having a little bit of an idea. Oh, I run the Tyrant past her. Take a little bit of damage on the return. But decide I want to get in range of these lead belchers so I can turn around and spray her. So I pop Foe Seeker just to make that Tyrant run a little bit extra speedy. And he takes the bait all day long. The Noblars are running up to support just in case. As he's bringing the Peasant Horseman along, I don't want to trap my Tyrant up. Um, so as you can see... We push off the Peasant Horseman a little bit. These guys are still popping shots since this Terracotta Sentinel. But we do get a bit of a fight here. Um, and, you know, the Tyrant is not a slouch himself. He will do some good damage back. Even though he, she is popping heals, stuff like that. The Tyrant's still a good unit. They do get in, but the Lead Belt should start absolutely raining shots down. I should have brought just four squads of these. Absolutely disgusting. Um, so at this point, I've managed to trap up Mao Ying, and she's taken a lot of fire. The Noblars are being hit too, but you know they're doing their purpose of being friendly fired. I'm getting stuck too hard on this Terracotta Sentinel. I should have pushed past and gone for the crossbowman. He's managing to get quite a lot of free range firing. And I should have brought the man eaters back and just got them to use the rest of their ammo. So Mao Ying starts running. She is not liking the confrontation she was stuck in. As you can see, uh, you know, she's taken a fair amount of damage. There's 3, 400, 500 HP lost in those just volleys. So the tyrant runs up. I'm going to use him to go break the lines. You know, there's another volley there. Uh, Majority of them miss, but you know, we still take off two 300 HP offer. Straight up again, she's just been absolutely demolished by these lead belchers. With some really impressive range. The enemy ogre has beat his opponent already and come out quite healthy. Um, I know at this point I'm going to struggle, so a lot of my squads have been heavily damaged by the Jade Warrior Crossbowman. The Tyrant goes in and I'll decide he needs to take out this Terracotta. The Terracotta really wants my Man-Eaters for their pistols. Miao Ying is not looking the most healthy and I know if I have any chance of winning this free-for-all, I need to kill her and get the points. I was sort of worried she was heading towards the Ogres and they were just about to get the kill on her. So we send the Tyrant back on the Terracotta Sentinel. He's still got 5,000 HP left, and this is what I mean the Terracotta Sentinels. If you haven't got designated anti-large units, they're so difficult to take out. Um, 
really such an impressive unit, a main staple for Cafe. Cafe might be in quite a bad place at the moment, um, but just absolute staple. We're going to completely ignore the fact that I just um, did more friendly fire damage to my own man eaters with that ability than I did my actual enemy. Um, but that's fine. These things, you know, typical ogre place. So now we've got. She does come back in, um, which I can only seem to cast a heal on a terracotta. Now, I've decided if I'm taking that, I'm trading. If she gets the heal off, I'm going to kill her. So I'll turn the lead belchers around. See, I thought it was a heal, but it ends up being a talons of the night, which I'm a little bit. It would have been more effective on my lead belchers than it would have been putting it on a tyrant. It's not that great at single target damage, but we just do dismember us. She can't run. And we hit her that hard. She falls through the ground and then falls back up through the ground. Uh, but we do manage to put her in the ground. And as you can see in the background, that's the terracotta going down as well. So we do manage to push things off. Uh, we managed to clean up Cafe, but if I'm honest, we're not healthy enough to take on this Ogre Army. But it is one of those. We're going to fight anyway because, you know, there's no such thing as an easy battle. I do try to get a little bit of value on my lead belchers some more, shooting in, do what damage I can. I try to hold the line as much as possible here, knowing that if I can get my lead belchers to shoot out their cavalry, that might give me a chance. We do manage to break one squad, but they are getting close. And then he uses Dismember to try and slow me. This gives him a perfect chance of moving his own lead belchers up. But we do manage to actually push off his Morphan cavalry, and he brought some with great weapons. A better choice than what I made, if I'm honest. I, could, I should have brought some with great weapons. It would have really helped taking care of the Terracotta. But I just absolutely love these units. You know, they're just... Shooting over the hill at each other, popping shots, you know, it is truly quite a spectacle. And then, as you can see there, I do lose the fight, but I did manage to come in second. So let's have a little bit of a look at, sort of, you know, my units. So I've got 550 kills. No, I believe actually. No, sorry, I got 698 kills. Um, so I got the most kills, but I didn't have the most remaining, obviously. Um, I did lose on score by a little bit, but I did manage to come second. I mean, the Morphan Cavalry did well. Um, I just think it definitely would have been better if I took great weapons. If I didn't take great weapons on them, I took some more, some units with anti-large. Uh, these guys, you know, they are a staple. Every time I bring them, they even make their own money back, or they just excel even more. They're great at shooting blood first out the sky. They're great at shooting lords. They're great at sniping. Uh, the tyrant quite impressed me for a unit that I forgot for the longest time. He was just sat there watching his own men die. Um, he did come on and actually quite impress me. The lead belchers, I knew it before I even looked at it. They were just going to make quite. A phenomenal amount of money um one thing i might change is probably even though i do love the money is i probably could have dropped them picked up some extra lead belchers um and then just made a bit of a bigger line i probably could have done with dropping these dual weapons as well and either picking up noblars or possibly picking up just more heavy front line anti-large um, the ogre balls did their job um not too happy with them i didn't utilize them the best they just went in and got absolutely crushed because my opponent did use his peasant horseman in well in buying the rest of his units some time. And the terracotta sentinels were absolute nightmares to deal with. Um, but again, this all just comes from the fact that I didn't bring anywhere near enough anti-large. Um, this guy's build was better than mine in my opinion. The four lead belchers, uh, the two more fangs with great weapons. I think you know he did make a very good build. Right, I'm going to leave this there. Thank you very much for watching the video guys and I can't wait to catch you on the next one.